the factors affecting enzymes. The following are surrounding factors affecting the enzyme. Hence, it affects the enzymatic activity. Such factors are variable. Either it can be excessive or in dire deficit. Yet, what is necessary is that the factor should be within optimum level. The effects of temperature to enzyme. In a biochemical reaction, optimum normal temperature is desired. The graph at the left indicates a temperature that is optimum for enzyme. From the y-axis going to the right area, colored in blue, is a temperature range of 10 to 45 degrees centigrade, which is acceptable. Beyond the dotted midline of the wave peak at the right, up wave, appears a red color area indicating a drastic temperature of 45 to 60 degrees centigrade and beyond. The illustration at the right side portrays the normal enzymatic structure of a tertiary enzyme at an optimum temperature, whereas the lower enzyme beyond the line or dotted broken line depicts a denatured enzyme as a result of exposure to a drastic temperature of 60 degrees and above. The effects of water to enzyme. Water is one of the reactants and enzymatic activity is suppressed in the absence of water. And as you may see, a cell must be within the water environment. Hydration of the cell will invite an enzymatic reaction and more and more reaction will happen when the water supports the enzyme. The effect of pH hydrogen ion concentration. Enzymes are active only over a limited range of pH. Specific enzymes thrive at a specific particular pH, such that of the trypsin, which has a 7.4 pH level, and a pepsin having 1.5 to 1.6 pH level, and hydrochloric acid having 2 to 3 pH level. Any alteration in hydrogen ion concentration will have a drastic effect on the biochemical reaction of the enzyme. The concentration of enzyme and concentration of substrate. A small amount of enzyme is enough for a large amount of substrate. An increased substrate concentration and more and more will increase the enzymatic activity or the biochemical reaction that is taking place. And this is the relationship of substrate with respect to concentration of enzyme. The effects of inhibitors and activators to enzyme. The inhibitors can inhibit the enzymatic activity such that of the competitive it can stop the substrate from entering into the active site. Likewise, the non-competitive can also alter the enzymatic activity and even the uncompetitive inhibitors can in any way affect the enzymatic activity. The same with 
the activator, which is an additional molecules required for optimum activity, as it combines with the substrate, the cofactor NAD and the FAT, the nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide and the flavonic adenine dinucleotide can be altered as the activator fits in with the substrate in an enzyme to form a substrate enzyme complex formation. The effects of light and or radiation to enzyme. Some enzymes are sensitive to light, yet some requires it for catalytic activity. The effects of enzymatic activity to a cofactor and to a substrate can either be affected either by the light or the radiation such as the X-rays, the ultraviolet rays, the beta rays, and the gamma rays. The Diagnostic Enzymes Diagnostic enzymes are biological catalysts, and they are essential in determining abnormal metabolic body activities or pathologic conditions which simply means that the enzymes serves as a diagnostic indicator of an overlying pathology within the human body. Hence, nurses are expected to be knowledgeable and discerning of the clinical importance of the role of enzyme in early diagnosis and interpretation of information at hand. Inasmuch as the study of normal laboratory values are indeed voluminous and truly complicated, I have devised a pictograph of enzyme chart for easy interpretation and appreciation. The chart is composed of six columns and four rows and are based on categories. Now from the left, the first column will describe the group according to classification of enzyme. And on the second column, are the origin or picture origin of where the enzyme are coming from or the source of the enzyme. And the third vertical column refers to the normal values. Just be guided that the normal values is indeed voluminous and you have to devise your study technique of familiarization instead of memorization. What we have to look for are not exactly to memorize the number because that would soon render to be futile and near impossible to memorize all the laboratory values. Just be clever to familiarize yourself that when you see the values, that would serve as a correct answer. Because it is indeed impossible to memorize all the laboratory values. And at the same time, different sources will reveal different values. On the fourth column is the etiology or causation of enzyme elevation. This will dictate the reason why the enzyme values increase. And that will reveal on the fifth column, the pathology or the disease, why the enzyme is increasing. And finally, at the sixth column is the diagnostic testing methods. At uh, the left side as well, you may notice that it is arranged horizontally on a subgroup. 
and that the first horizontal group or the rows <clears throat> are all about lactate dehydrogenase or the LDH. They are all isoenzyme of uh, lactate dehydrogenase and primarily they are found during muscle injury. Not only of the skeletal muscle but as well of the heart in particular. And at the second horizontal group, it describes the creatinine phosphokinase together with its isoenzyme. <clears throat> and primarily, all of these creatinine phosphokinase are referring to the heart, including the various organs. And on the third horizontal column, it describes the liver enzyme with its pathology, including the alanine aminotranspirase and alkaline phosphatase. And at the last horizontal group are mixed enzymes, a multi-organ enzymes that will include the prostate from acid phosphatase and the neurotransmitter from cholinesterase and the liver and gallbladder aglutamyl transpirase and amylase will describe the pancreas and the salivary glands finally you may look at the horizontal column and the vertical column and align them together and hope that this pictograph chart may guide and serve you well. All the best. Once again, we have reached the end of discussion. Let us assess and check your comprehension. You may pause the video for a good glance. Enjoy studying. And I hope this material is of help. All the best to you. That's all, folks. This has been your nurse, Rajaloji Koguro, saying thank you for watching and enjoy studying.